Hey friends, so now we're going to get into uh, demo number five of the day, um, where we're going to be going through and um, joining the components together of all of this from CI, CD, some bit of work management, connecting it up with teams for some chat ops. Um, and we're going to be working together on this to add a new feature to this, this code. So over to you, Peter. Great. So here we have the bookstore tech days, which is the repo that we've had a few glimpses of, of the full end-to-end -end, uh, operation of our CI CD workflows using GitHub Actions and Packages. And what we have here on the front is the uh, environments, and we've got this existing production environment. <clears throat> As we can see here, here's our bookstore. Uh, we've got this version uh, shown to us down here. Uh, but we're missing like a really important feature, which would be a star rating feature to actually add to our bookstore to give people a hint as to you know, what's a good book to buy compared to another. So back in our repository, uh, in the virtue of like blue, blue piece of stuff, we have uh, already created a feature branch here uh, called feature book star rating. And this includes our books. Uh, bookstore modifications necessary to add the star rating. So I'm going to uh, create a pull request by clicking on this contribute button here. I'm going to open the pull request. And here we've got the pull request um, form and we're using a template here within GitHub, which has pre-populated a bunch of things for us that we're just going to modify to uh, adding the book star rating uh, and i'm happy with that so i'm going to create this pull request and you know work with my colleagues on getting this uh, completed now the, one of those things is i'm going to require my code to be reviewed so i'm going to request that sam review my code for me and this is going to prompt sam with a notification that there's a uh the code review ready for him to review at his pleasure. The other thing that we've also got kicking off here is we've got a bunch of GitHub automation that is kicking, uh, that has been processed in the back, like our code scanning. Um, and we've got other aspects here of uh, the, uh, building the containers and that necessary for him to actually uh, review if he wanted to. So over to you, Sam, to perform the code review. Thank you, Peter. So, um, if I hop over to my Edge browser. So, now I've opened up my notifications, we can see here that we've got um, the pull request that Peter's opened up. And if I follow that link through, it will go through to the pull request itself. And I want to uh, just have a quick review of this code. So, across the top, we get this add your review button. And when I open up the add your review, I can look at the code and I uh, some really good stuff in here. but the one thing that stands out to me is the rating set to zero. Now I'm quite a positive person. I want to um, change that so that it defaults to a uh, higher rating. So like five stars as a standard. So I click the pulse on the line and then there's this button here for inserting a suggestion. And I'm going to change that suggestion to say five. I'm going to put a little bit of a note underneath that says um, And click the start the review. Now at that point, I think uh, the rest of it looks good to me. So I can um, finish the review, um, request the change and submit it back. Now this will uh, submit that as a, as a code review with a, with a change that I've asked. Um, and at this point, I can pass it back to Peter. So if we jump back to our repository and my view on this, uh, I've got the uh, pull request. I can enter the pull request and I can see that Sam has uh, given me some, some good feedback here and also get the uh, suggestion in, in line here. Uh, I can equally click on view changes and I get a nice summary. He only made a single line change there but this is nice and convenient and I think this is all good and great. But because he did this with the suggestion feature, I get this ability to commit that suggestion straight in. So I'm going to accept that and take that because it's good to be positive. Now, 
What that's going to do inside our uh, pull request that we're looking at here is the, that we can see that this is now a commit has been added specifically, including his change. And now our checks are all kicking off again. So our automated CI is now rebuilding our software with this change actually physically applied to this. And all of this is done inside the browser. I haven't had to go and clone my code. I haven't had to set up any tooling. I haven't even had to use uh, GitHub code spaces to do this. All of this is built inside the system and inside my browser. Now, one of the other interesting aspects of this as this is actually building out is if we look at our Teams integration that we have here is that we've got our pull request data going through to our team space where we're working. So in our general flow here, we've got the, um, the details of the pull request being open at the, at the top. Uh, we've got the ability to comment and add some details to the, the pull request uh, process and they will flow through to GitHub and we'll come back to that in a moment. And I can also see the uh, code changes that have been requested, unfortunately not rendered in the nicest possible way here today. But this is uh, something that needs to be improved within our integration with. Uh, but Peter, with... I really love the fact that this has um, uh, made sure that you've got that validation by rerunning the checks on the repo, because that just ensures that our pipeline um, has done all the validations that you've put in via actions. Um, yeah. So that ensures the quality of the code. So if I can't have introduced a bug um, that's caught by the the, the tests. So yeah, so here we can see that we've passed all our tests. So yeah, the, the changes haven't actually introduced any, any breaking changes. And we're now rebuilding our container, which will allow us to actually physically consume that in an environment. So I think probably the next thing that we want to do with, with our process here is that we want to see what this actually looks like. Well, how does this actually manifest in our environment? So to do this, we're going to need a test environment. But before we can get to a test environment, we just need to wait for this container to build. And speaking to some of the aspects of the caching mechanisms that we added earlier inside our workflows, you can see how fast it was to rebuild our container. And the reason it was so fast is we only changed a small subset of the layers and we had all the others cached there as well. So if we jump back to our pull request, uh, we should see that our checks are now all passed and we're good. So we've got all these, all these um, checks checks here the change has been requested i've applied that particular change but now i want to deploy it to an integration environment and now i can do this within github using using actions uh system but i can also do this within our integration inside the teams environment so i can go back to this pull request i can add a comment and i can add a slash command that we've implemented as part of the github actions workflows inside our repository so i'm going to ask for a deploy to test and so slash deploy is our slash command that we're listening out for in our github actions workflow and test is the environment that i'm wanting to deploy this to so i'm going to hit the submit button on that and from my team's environment i'm now able to interact with that pull request now how does that manifest if we jump back to our pull request here we can see that here's, here's my avatar with a microsoft teams layer sitting over the front with slash deploy test I can also see that with the Microsoft Teams for GitHub integration was the aspect that was added to that. And already, and while I've been talking through that, I can see that now a label has been applied to our pull request. Now this label was part of the automation system that we implemented here for this uh, slash deploy test uh, command. And now we've got another thing happening inside our repository, and we've got this notification that somebody's requested a deployment to the test environment, which just happens to be me. Um, we can see the application container that we're looking to deploy, the name of the image, as well as the version number. And this version number is specific to our feature branch. So this gives us our continuous delivery type versioning that we were looking for earlier um, that we spoke about. So we've got some kind of Simba, we've got the branch name, we've got the commit SHA on that branch. And because this is an integration build, we have the bash snapshot in there. And this is now kicking off a deployment to our Azure environment in via um, GitHub Actions. So if we jump back to this and just see what actually happened inside our deploy command that we have inside our repository, here's our successful workflow. And we can see that this uh, went and got us the temporary token, uh, parsed and responded to the command that was issued. Now, what does that really mean in practice? If we look inside our workflow, uh, we've got this 
uh, trigger set up to listen on issue comments. So pull requests and issues are effectively the same thing inside GitHub uh, with, with some small variations. But here we're listening to issue comments. So Microsoft Teams was able to add a comment to our pull request, which is the equivalent of an issue comment. And it was created and that triggered this particular workflow. This particular job also has a conditional in place looking for the contents of the body of the comment to start with slash deploy. And then it does some extra uh, conditional parsing of that to extract the environments. And here we can see within our JavaScript snippet that we have within this that we only support QA and test as to those two variables uh, associated with that. If we pass that condition, we then raise a um, call to the uh, OctoKit uh, that is provided to us by the GitHub script action, which is then going to add that label. And by virtue of that label, that then generates a whole bunch of other events, which then results in the uh, culmination of requesting this to be deployed to our Azure environment. And here we can see our deployment to our Azure environment is in process, and we are currently still deploying the container to our environment. Is there anything that you want to point out on this, Sam? I think it's awesome. I love the integration of being able to push this through. And um, I'm not going to share my screen right this second, but I can see from Teams as well the comment that this is now being pushed out to the test environment. So when we were collaborating together on code, when you choose to push it through to test, I get a notification in Teams as well being able to see that. And that gives me the opportunity to go and just uh, nosy through it as well at the same time um, while you're, you're pushing it through these different environments. And I think that's a really powerful way of making sure that we're staying in sync with each other as we work on the, the code together. Indeed, indeed. Now we can see that our, our deployment's actually now completed. We're just waiting for the last little aspects of this to, to complete. But if we go back to our pull request, because this was all done within the GitHub API, we should see a deployment that's actually physically listed here, So, which we do. Uh, we've now got this nice view deployment button, which I can click on, and there we have it. We've got star rating features added to our bookstore demo, deployed to a test environment. Now I can throw this over to Sam to heavily evaluate, test, and make sure that this is exactly what he wants me to do before we actually then merge this into our code base. The other thing that we can point out here is that we are presenting the appropriate version number for our integration build here, as well as the uh, URL changing significantly on our repository here. So uh, with that in mind, I think if you're happy with that, Sam, you could probably go ahead and uh, merge this pull request. I know you can do it within GitHub, but maybe you want to try out another sort of slash command? Well, let's give it a go. Do you want me to share my screen? Uh, just one moment. Yes. So if I go and share my screen, and now you can see, I could see everything that Peter could see there. So I saw the, the comments on it going through the test. And we I could follow that comment through to the, the GitHub um, comment inside the pull request, and I could go and check out the different pieces. But for the time today, we're just going to, I've seen Peter do it on our Zoom call. So I'm now going to deploy it from inside um, Teams. So here, I'm just going to go to the comment, a bit like Peter did with the slash deploy. But this time, I'm going to go slash merge, because I'm happy for this to be merged into the, the main branch and for it to be pushed out into production. So by submitting this, that's going to start the ball rolling of all these different parts. And we should see that then roll into um, GitHub and uh, uh, the Octo um, actions start to work their way through and push that through. The, so we can just see the eyes have just popped up on that. So uh, it has been at least acknowledged, uh, but we have actually had a, had a problem here of the fact that uh, I merged your requesting changes through, but you didn't actually accept uh, the end of that result. So we've blocked ourselves by our pull request rules on that. So if you could uh, possibly scroll back to the top as the review that's there and uh, change that requires changes to um, uh, to a uh, approved. So click review changes and go to approve <clears throat> and just I'm going to put in a quick comment that it looks good to me and a little uh, a 
plus one in there for a thumbs up. And then, okay, so yes. now we're looking better. And if you just jump back to Teams and issue that command again. So the great thing about Teams here is that you might not have access to GitHub on, on the go. Now, GitHub also has a uh, mobile application, which is amazing. But today we're just showing the integration here with, with uh, Teams. So maybe you're somewhere where you only have access to Teams and this allows you to actually achieve that. So if we uh, post oh. that... That's a great point, Peter, because sometimes if you're out in the bank, I might only have my uh, mobile phone with me and being able to open up the card on Teams on my mobile without having to log into um, uh, GitHub and go through all of the authentication mechanisms that the organization have set for that is quite nice um, and still being able to talk through the different pieces. Absolutely. So if you just jump back to that pull request, we should see some uh, activity. It's now telling me... Oh, well, so it's merged, it's done. That's awesome. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and throw it back to you, Peter. Great. So what we now have on this is I can I can see that uh, this is physically merged uh, from my view as well. And if we look into our GitHub Actions, uh, we can see that there's quite a bit of activity going on inside our repository. So one of the first things we've done here is we can see this clean up PR environments is executed. Now, this is something new that we haven't talked about up to this point, but of course we deployed an integration environment and we definitely need to clean up after ourselves, right? We have no, no use for this because these, these changes are already incorporated. So what that is going to do is that's gonna go and clean up our Azure environment that we previously provisioned, deprovision it and take it out of service. But what we've got here with the continuous delivery approach that we've been working towards is that we can see that on the main branch, we've now got the, the test being executed. So the integration of all those changes, uh, including Sam's good recommendation to let's start a five-star rating um, on, on our uh, bookstores, uh, books, um, is, is now integrated. So we've both collaborated on, that, on the changes that we're going to see here. It's gonna build the container and it's ultimately going to update our production environment. Uh, this is going to take, unfortunately, a little bit of time to jump through the hoops here, uh, but we would see a typical type of approach with the container being built, the uh, continuous de delivery deployment would be triggered at the end of the workflow, and that would ultimately culminate in us seeing the production environment flick from active to uh, in, in progress, and then updated to the new bookstore with all the bells and whistles connected as we would uh, like to see. Uh, equally, we can see here now that the environment is in fact destroyed uh, from previously being active. So our environment has been cleaned up for us. Um, I so that. love that, Peter. Um, that, that's a, a superb feature there of destroying the unused um, environment once it's been finished with. Because, you know, as part of the customer success unit, one of the things that we do, we try to do is make sure that customers are making the best use of their Azure investments. And there's no point keeping old environments around once they're past their um, use by date. So by destroying that, you're minimizing the bill for our customers. So I absolutely love that. Thank you for bringing that one in. <laughs> you're most welcome. Um, and I think that really just finishes up our uh, whirlwind tour of the uh, GitHub Actions packages and integrations with ADO and Azure. That's awesome. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Awesome. Right, so we're finally coming towards the end. So this is the final Q&A before we wrap up. Um, but I just wanted to start by saying I, I, I love that. Um, whole piece because it just brings all the different components together as we go through. Um, so thank you, Pete, for help, for that demo. <laughs> Thanks for the interaction. It was actually nice to, to do one together. Indeed, indeed. Um, one, one of the questions that we've had come through is around, um, you know, ensuring that only certain people can get code out from different branches, things like that. Um, and one of the ways that you can do that is by using branch protection rules. Now, both Azure Repos and GitHub supports branch protection rules, and that allows you to set policies. And I can't remember what the GitHub terminology is for it, um, but you can set policies against a particular branch to say only certain people can approve pull requests into it, and other people can't push directly to it. That doesn't stop people from still 
pushing their code to a local branch of that, but it won't let them push it into the origin, you know, up into GitHub or Azure DevOps. As, as we saw in the in that particular demo, our, our merging is actually physically blocked. That was the branch protection rules in effect. That uh, a, a review was required, and that review had to be approved. Um, so that's a good example of that. The other aspect that I failed to point out when we went through that demo, because we only showed the slash deploy command, but the slash merge command that we were using there was actually looking up a GitHub team to only allow project managers to issue that. So if I was uh, to run that slash merge command, um, I would have been rejected and told that I'm not allowed to do it because I lack the permissions. So uh, the, the sky is the limit with respect to the integration points that you have for controlling that. I think that's a brilliant example of the kind of guardrails that you can set up to be able to ensure that um, developers are following good practices as they work through and to, as, I, as we keep coming back to, building up the confidence from the business that developers are, are able to do the right thing easily, but there are guardrails in place to stop you know, actions from happening that aren't desired. Indeed. Yeah. Cool. Um, one of the other questions we've got as well is, uh, can you do chat ops from um, Azure DevOps repos as well? Uh, if I'm honest, that one isn't something which is very as easy to show. Uh, you can do Azure Boards integrations as we have shown today from um, uh, Azure DevOps to Teams, but doing kind of uh, pull requests and push requests would, would require a lot more kind of manual effort to be able to do that because you'd have to write um, interactions through the REST API to be able to do it. So uh, we don't have a demonstration or any kind of off the shelf piece that we can show you with that like we can with GitHub. Um, any other questions you just wanted to touch on there, Peter? Um, yeah, so there were some questions around sort of Azure Functions and, and other sort of technologies to use for deployment here. Um, we've only showcased like container-based deployments and using predominantly the Azure CLI or some Azure-provided uh, GitHub Actions uh, in our composition. Um, but Actions is extensible and the community is vibrant. There's over 8,000 uh, community-provided Actions. And when we say community there, that also includes big companies uh, contributing to that. Um, I use Terraform a lot in my GitHub Actions workflows uh, to actually do all my deployments for more complex things. Today, it was just a simple container. Um, there's plenty of either doing things directly as you would from like a command line um, and, and action steps that support that, or you can go to the full hardcore end of infrastructure of, of code and doing GitOps for your deployments. All of that is available to you. It's about you striking the balance and what's sort of applicable to your use case. I think that's a, there are some great examples in there as well. Um, I think I came across one recently where there was a, a plugin to do accessibility testing as part of your CI CD process. Yeah, and by doing that, you're just ensuring the quality of your um, application from an accessibility perspective. And there are literally hundreds of, of kind of plugins that allow you to do that. So that's a really great shame. The, the, other, the other thing to point out is that within the Actions ecosystem, any of those jobs that execute um, actually be, can be used as uh, status checks within your branch protection rules. So if, for instance, you needed to pass your accessibility checks like you've said, you can actually make that a condition of your branch protection rules and stop pull requests from being merged that would uh, potentially break that sort of functionality. That's awesome. You know, it's, it's again, it's ensuring that quality standards so that you can automate with confidence and give the business that level of confidence that when the developer puts code in, it's going to be the top notch quality ready to go straight to customers. And therefore, it's fine to automate it end to end. Yeah. Now, one of the things we haven't touched on today is like other deployment strategies, doing like blue green deployments, things like that. But obviously, I'm sure we can do that with GitHub um, actions. Uh, relatively easily. Yes, yeah. Uh, as I said, it, it's it's GitHub Actions is, is a workflow automation system, and I'd like to sort of spin it as if you can dream it, you can probably build it in GitHub Actions today. Um, I've built some ridiculously complex and convoluted uh, action workflows uh, in the past, in, in some cases just to show customers what's available, and others to entertain myself, like uh, accessing my Raspberry Pi with an LCD screen to display OctoCats. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. I, I remember um, a long time ago, I used to work uh, at a software development firm which had an open plan office and we had a build server in the corner of the room. 
and every time you pushed code, build server ran. And if it if it built successfully, it played. We built that city on rock and roll. Um, so we could achieve the same thing, couldn't we? We could put a Raspberry Pi and get it to play the music every time the build succeeds. It's a little bit harder in today's remote uh, working environments, but have a few of them dotted around. But the uh, yeah, it is possible. I I like that. I'll have to bring it back. <laughs> Uh, cool. Uh, is there anything you want to sort of wrap up on uh, on what we covered today? So I just want, yeah, let, let's just wrap up at this point because I don't think there are any other questions that we want to just cover. So um, just to, to step through what we've done today, we've had our five different uh, demo sessions that we've covered. The first demo session we went through kind of taking um, app source code um, from uh, Azure DevOps into GitHub. And that was literally just because we wanted to show off some of the really awesome um, technologies from security, CoQL, Actions, et cetera, that are inside GitHub. Um, within the second session, um, Peter showed us how GitHub Actions work, what the packages can be done, what we can do with packages, and how all of those pieces are glued together. By our third session, we were um, you know, using the DevSecOps kind of tooling that's part of, our, of GitHub. Um, some really awesome pieces with Dependabot, with advanced security, and uh, gluing all of those things together to really ensure the best quality code that we can. Then we went on to our fourth demo session um, where we talked about um, Azure Boards and how you can integrate that into GitHub um, and also how you can integrate it into Teams. And in our, our fifth session, the one we just finished, we kind of grouped all these different pieces together and we came up with a mashup of technologies so that we could show you end to end all the different pieces. Now that isn't necessarily the only way you can do it. As with so many things in DevOps, it's about being context specific to your organization and making sure you're choosing the right pieces for your business. We've just chosen a group of technologies there that work really well to be able to show you what is possible. It's the art of the possible. Um, just a quick reminder at the end of that, um, there are some resources that we've been shared on the way through. Um, if you've got any more questions, no, um, thank you very much for being part of this today. And uh, if you can fill out any of the, the survey forms at the end, that'd be really awesome because that really helps us out. And then there are a couple of contact forms for um, Microsoft, from Microsoft and GitHub on if you want any more information. And at that point, I think um, we're all good to uh, wrap up. Well, it's been an absolute joy working with you on the set, the integration, uh, sorry, interaction and uh, the fun of uh, building out these, these demos has been entertaining. You too, Peter. Thank you very much. And thank you all for coming along and watching. <laughs>